Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for part two of this oil painting lesson on my piece, Ocean Sunrise. Today we're going to be finishing up this piece, I already have the sky in. If you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link to it in the description below. But today we're going to get right into the waves and the actual ocean, and then on the left hand side we're going to fill in the shore, sand, and a little bit of some water we're on the actual beach, a little bit of a runoff, and then we have a few larger rocks over here on the left. Grab a half inch chip brush, great little brush, very cheap to buy, about a dollar at a local hardware store. And we're going to mix together some raw umber and some ultramarine blue. Get a nice dark bluish gray mix, more blue than the umber. We have this really dark mix. We're going to put a line right up against the horizon line underneath that lowest cloud. And I need some more paint. So I'm going to put some more paint out here in a second and we will fill this in smoothly. Just trying to get the line straight as possible. When I started this painting, you might have seen that I had penciled in a lot of the lines that I needed for this piece to get the perspective correct, get the composition laid out. The very first line I put down in pencil was this horizon line where the sky meets the sea. going to do a bit of counter change here. We're going to play the light white surf, the waves, against the very dark blue backdrop. And we're going to follow these lines that I've drawn in here of the rippling rolling waves crashing into the shore. This piece uses single point perspective. All of the lines of these waves are converging on the disappearing point about an inch in from the left hand side of the canvas. And each of these waves are gonna converge at that point. If you don't know how to do single point perspective, check out some videos on YouTube on how to do that. I don't have a video about that myself, but there's lots of great artists out there who do. So check those people out. A little more blue brought in now. Just trying to get this line as straight as possible. Slowly filling this in. Most important that the top edge of that line is straight. That's pretty good. Take a two inch wash brush, take a bit of the light gray mixture and lots of liquid white. And we're gonna just blend this out gently at the top here. Just soften any of the inconsistencies. Make sure that everything is laying nice and flat. love using one of these big clean wash brushes just for this effect. It just softens everything in the sky and blends everything really smoothly. Touch and drag over. If I go too far, I can 
people back and blend out and fix it. Each time that I'm pulling that brush off the canvas, I'm going to wipe it off on some paper towel on the side to start again. So I'm cleaning that big brush off each time I cut away so that I'm getting a nice clean brush for blending. Got a little too low with my big brush. Come back in with the half inch chip brush there and fix that. Back to my gray mix. It's a mixture of the umber and the blue and a touch of the white. More blue than umber. Grab a bit of that gray color again with that large wash brush. Get that smoothed out. Fix this over here as well. Just soften that edge right where the water meets the sky. Okay, back to my gray mix here. Kind of a blue gray mix, very blue, much more blue than gray. Following these lines again, converging. Grab a bit of the white, some of that liquid white. Same stuff that Bob Ross uses in his paintings. It's a great flow medium. And we will grab a tiny, tiny little bright brush and a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And we're just going to press it, doing these tiny little motions up and down to form these waves. A little more white through here. And I'm just pushing those waves right out of the brush, pressing firmly up and down. I'm moving, again, following the line that I have marked in pencil that has mostly been covered up and all the way to the left-hand side to the vanishing point. A little more titanium white in the mix, a little bit lighter, following the line again just below where I have the blue. Try not to cover up all the blue that you put down. You need some of it to show through. It's hard to see the light without the dark. You need the darker colors to be there so that white appears to be more foamy and vibrant. Closer to the horizon line, we're gonna just soften slightly and just blend gently outwards. Grabbing a stencil brush now, a little bit of the coral mix. That's a bit of the raw sienna, a touch of some titanium white, liquid white, maybe just a smidgen of the permanent red. And I'm just filling in here with some highlights. Here's the coral mix in earnest. More of that red, I'm really gonna pinkify this. More sienna, touch more of the two whites. Get a nice kind of rosy coral color. A little more of the sienna to get it more muted. More of an orange, don't want it to be too pink. Again, using that stencil brush, nice rounded edge on that brush. Just gonna lighten up a few spots. There is some of the light is really showing through here in the thin, thin layer of water on the edge of this beach here. And I've destroyed some of the waves that I've created, but that's okay, we'll smooth this out first, and then we can go back in with the blue and the white. It's a good idea to get your base layer figured out first, and then you can work out the rest of it as you go. Okay, titanium white, liquid white, and just a touch of that light blue mixture. Lots of the white here. You can see I have just glopped it onto the end of that brush. Follow these lines converging at the vanishing point. The lines are getting wider apart, but they're running in parallel. It's going to look like layers of waves coming into the shoreline, and it's going to give me the illusion of depth in my piece.
I'm delighted to say, as of the recording of this video, I've actually already sold this painting. I think that's a first for me, having sold a painting before I even finish putting together the painting lessons on it. And this is a popular piece, and I've had numerous compliments on it on Facebook. If you're not following me there, check it out. It's Impulsive Artistry on Facebook. You can also follow me on Twitter at Art Impulsive, on Instagram, Impulsive Artistry, on Google+. Check it out. Hey, if you're subscribed to this channel, make sure that you hit the little bell icon that's near the top of the page of my art channel. It'll make sure that notifications are turned on whenever I upload a new video. It'll alert you and say, hey, Impulsive Artistry has uploaded a new video, Charles has a new one up, and then you can watch it more easily. I try to post twice a week, once or twice a week if I can. Uh, it depends on how busy my week is, but if you hit the bell icon, don't have to check. You can just instantly get notified if I have a new video up. Grab some of that gray mix now and a touch of the raw umber, that tiny bright brush, darkened it slightly. There was just way too much of the coral color on the top right. We need to make it more blue and I'm going to just fill this in and blend out. Gonna add some more liquid white here and start to go back in with these waves. The ones that I put in already looked okay, but we can make them look better. Bit of a process getting these waves to look right, but by degrees and with determination we will get there. If you want to buy one of my paintings, you can check out my Etsy shop. That's etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry. Again, that's etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry. I just put up two or three new paintings there the other day. Check it out. All right, there's the white. I've really grabbed a lot of this titanium white and just by pressing upward, I'm getting some nice ridge lines and here's a lot more of a white here. We're gonna get these crashing rolling waves coming in here. Looks very nice. Again, I'm putting it right above that blue. The blue is kind of the underside of the waves and then the, right at the top is all the surf. You can see the two lines are converging on one another, getting closer and closer together as they get closer and closer to that vanishing point way off in the distance. They need to not be running in parallel but actually widening slightly. Just gonna use my finger there to gently smooth that out all the way over there till it disappears out of sight. Some more of the white. Pure titanium white there and we'll put another row of white and some more waves. Gonna grab some gray mix, lightly darken underneath here for some shadow. And the same thing over here, just gently blend that together. Bit more coral mix, just push it back a bit, get some nice counter change again using that stencil brush. Nice rounded edge, it's great for mixing and blending. Create some nice effects with that brush. Back to my bright brush and a little more of the titanium white, a bit of the liquid white, but mostly just pure white. A little bit brighter over there in the distance. A little more coral mix just to divide the two lines a little further. Looks nice. All right, I'm gonna grab some of the shore now. Here's some Van Dyke Brown, some of that gray mix, the umber and the blue, and a little more of the blue there. Gonna mix that all together, brown, gray color, mostly brown, really dark color now. A lot of the blue and the brown together. Get it nice and dark. 
and we're going to put in some of these larger rocks that are sitting up over here at the bottom left where I still have some canvas showing. Because the light source is in the distance, these rocks are quite dark and they stand out against the lighter water which reflects the sky above and these are in shadow because again the light is behind them. Bit of the darker blue meeting there. A little more of my brown mix for these rocks and they reach all the way over to that same vanishing point. Let's make these a little bit taller. grab some of the lemon yellow, some of that brown mix, permanent red, and a dash of the liquid white using that same tiny bright brush. It's actually a very cheap brush. I got in a pack of like 10 or 15 that you could get for about 10 bucks. These are really made for kids and I just picked them up. I don't remember why. They work really well actually. For what I needed to do, it's working just fine. I'm using it today just to showcase that you really can use anything to make art. You don't need to have super fancy brushes. I do try to get really nice paint. I do spend the money on getting high quality artist oil paints with nice rich pigmentation. I know some artists swear by really, really nice natural brushes and I've used a few of those before, but for today, this works just fine. Got a nice red, reddish brown going here for the sand. And that's a nice contrasting color to the blue. Let's go back into that darker umber mix. Brown and blue makes a nice almost black color. And we're gonna work on these distant bluffs or rocks up here. Just going to define that a little better. Back to my coral mix. Just adjust slightly the edge of this water and soften this beach line here. my brush on the opposite side now just so I can see better a little bit closer okay gonna grab my half inch chip brush back to the blue gray mix just going to gently blend through here with the darker blue just adjust a few of these lines There's one that's touching down. I want to divide the two. There we go. And we'll take that light gray mix and some liquid white. Lots of the white, just a touch of the blue. Make it a nice light blue. Touch of the brown in there. Touch more. It's a little bit of some standing water. Some runoff here, right around the base of these rocks.
mixing a lot of the brown into that blue and allowing the two to blend out. It's a pretty thin layer of water, so a lot of that sand color underneath is showing up inside of that blue. Connecting over here. And just gently blending that together using another very small brush. Not in love with how that's laying, so we're going to make some adjustments. Very easy to do, just grab some of the brown mix and we'll just push it back. Doesn't take a lot to adjust things, you can just play with it, push it back, soften things easily. Blending here with the brown. There we go, pushing that blue right up against those rocks. Maybe we'll adjust it a little more. Back to that light gray mix with a different brush. Tiny bright brush, and we'll bring it back in a little bit more, but Let's not go too heavy with it. Okay, and the gray mix, and we're gonna go back up to these rocks and just make a few more adjustments. Bring them down a little bit lower. Now I bring that line straight out and actually after I looked at the painting at the end I decided to adjust that back rock. It should be pointing more towards the horizon line. It's actually pointing horizontal now, the very bottom, and it shouldn't be. It should be more of an angle going from left upwards to the right. So when you paint that in, that back rock, the bottom of it should be from the left and then kind of up and to the right towards the disappearing point right there. So I had to make that adjustment after I finished the piece. Back to my big flat wash brush. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this painting lesson video.